This is MFG Out Loud. Courageous conversations about sales and marketing for today's manufacturers. With your hosts, Ray Zaganto and Allison DeFore. Hey, Trailblazers, welcome to the latest episode of MFG Out Loud. Man, have we got an awesome guest today. This is another one of my LinkedIn finds. Uh, I have all these gold nuggets I can uncover because I've, I'm connected to all these amazing people out there. And uh, Greg Miskio from Windbound Marketing had did an article and an interview and some cool stuff with Mr. Adam Keating, who is with us here today. And when you hear the story, you're going to know why. I just geeked out instantly about what's going on. Adam is the co-founder and CEO of uh, CoLab Software. And you'll have all the links and you're going to hear all the stories. And I'm not going to ruin, uh, his, uh, his origin story or his, uh, the elevator pitch, but I am going to tell you that, uh, from my perspective, what Adam and his team have done is taking on, they've taken on a problem that has plagued engineering teams, large and small for decades and they solved it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Adam's got amazing credentials, a resume to drool over. You're going to find him on LinkedIn, and you're going to find that in the past five years, Adam's uh, he's witnessed the most innovative companies use the most outdated tools for their design and issue management, resulting in delayed projects, exceeded budgets. Today, he leads an awesome team at Colab Software to empower engineering teams to build the future faster. Adam, welcome to MFG Out Loud. Yeah, Ray. Thanks for having me, man. It's been uh, it's been fun getting to know you. Have a lot of energy, and I've been following you on LinkedIn too. So I'm uh, I'm super happy to be here today. That is awesome. Well, listen, let's let's jump in and get to the courageous conversation. What walk us through the origin story of Colab? What got you here today? Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a long a long path that I never would have uh, forecasted. I don't think back when I was uh, you know when they ask you in high school, they say you know where do you want to be when you grow up? I, yeah never said where I am right now, I would have never thought about it. So really for me, it all, it all goes back to going through engineering school. I was mechanical engineering, um, probably my third year. Um, and at that point I'd been very energy driven, didn't really know fully what I was passionate about. And then it all kind of started with this hyperloop competition. Elon Musk put out this competition challenge worldwide and said, you know, uh, here's a concept, go build it. Um, and at that point, you know, I was kind of spending an hour, to here and there, just kind of thinking about it. And sure enough, uh, six months later, my uh, my ability to say, I'm just going to do this a little bit, turned into it's my full-time life. Wow. Uh, and it became like the biggest eye-opener for me, not just from like the technology side, but mm-hmm. really seeing what the problems were and how they actually could be fixed. Because um, for those listening, I'm from a small place called uh, St. John's in Newfoundland, Labrador. So if you're looking at a map, as far east as you can possibly go in Canada on an island. Um, and <laughs> That type of perspective of like, hey, you know, build a new mode of transportation uh, seems like something that's not possible for Newfoundland. And, you know, I actually believe that uh, until I showed up in Texas in 2016 at the SpaceX competition, top 100 teams out of the world competing on this new design. And, you know, we get into this and our design, truthfully, wasn't very good. Um, okay. it really, And we still made the top 100 with it. So I was thinking, OK, we're not too bad. Um, and we made a few tweaks and long story short, two years later, that team actually came second globally, um, building the very first air levitated Hyperloop pod, went 100 kilometers an hour in our very first attempt. Wow. Um, and, you know, at that point, I think kind of shocked ourselves, to be truthful, um, shocked ourselves that this was possible. And mm-hmm. what we took from it was, you know, there's a lot of problems and we can fix them. Um, mm-hmm. And that's ultimately what gave myself and my co founder, Jeremy, I would say the kick um, that we need to do something better for engineering teams in the manufacturing industry because. We were only four or five years into this and we were already super frustrated. We were already mm-hmm. experiencing all those back and forth PowerPoint decks trying to like convey DFM feedback. We were already seeing the spreadsheet trackers that would be, you know, six months out of date, issues going left, right, and center, email chains that never ended, the yeah. problems that get to the shop floor, and then you know, the frustrated manufacturer that ran about why is this thing always changing and the customer upset because it didn't come out the way they expected. And yeah. it all kind of boiled back to how teams work together and how they communicate. Yeah. Um, and seeing it from a student team, then into companies like Tesla, and then a Series D MedTech startup, and then all the way up to the biggest companies like ExxonMobil and 
general dynamics and no matter who it was, there was no one immune to this problem. It became right. clear that, you know, something had to be done. And, and that was ultimately what got us to start Colab. That's it's, it's funny because when we had uh, uh, kind of our, our pre-show conversation and you mentioned, you know, exchanging the PowerPoints, you know, with the circles and the arrows and change this. Uh, and then with those, those hundreds of design changes, I, I had to cringe when you mentioned the, uh, the Excel tracker and, and everybody throws their hands up and says, you know what? At the end, we'll, we'll load it all up. Uh, you know, there's nothing current. It's, it's all after the fact, if you're lucky, you know, to, to get things caught up. So man, that's, that's, that's been a problem forever. Is your, is the platform solely po- focused on like, you know, the, the big companies? Certainly you've had a lot of experience and exposure there. But but those problems happen all over the place, right? Yeah, I mean, for us, like, the way we kind of looked at this is that the reason it's existed for so long in the manufacturing world, like, this, this problem is largely solved in the software world. And like it's largely solved, you look at a sales org, right? Like Salesforce has changed the way sales teams behave. And they plugged a whole bunch of other things in to make it easier. Software is plugged in. You know, you got GitHub plugged into a whole bunch of things to make this easier. Like, people don't do spreadsheet tracking in either yeah. of those places, right? It's just not a thing. Um, and they don't have conversations over email about these problems either. Okay, so yeah. those things were fixed. And, you know, that helped me get us to say, you know, where do we start? And for us, we want to understand the most complex parts first. And that, yeah. that was with the big organizations. But sure. if you look at any manufacturing vertical, maybe it's automotive, aerospace and defense, industrial equipment, the supply chain is everything. Um, yeah. And if you look at how these, you know, you go look at, say, Ford building, you know, their new, model, their new vehicle. Um They've got that many different suppliers and manufacturers and partners built into that process that mm. it doesn't start at Ford, right? It starts with all of those players mm. and how they engage. And our, our whole philosophy is that these new tools and just like forcing something down and like making it be like a two, three year journey to adopt just yeah. doesn't work. And that's one of the main reasons why manufacturing has been kind of left behind. Yeah. You know, the hesitancy around cloud, a lot of the big vendors, albeit very important solutions for, you know, your PLM solution, they're very complicated, right? And mm-hmm. it's not something that day to day anybody really wants to be trying to figure out. You want to get your work done, focus on innovation, build a thing, move on to the next. Yeah. Um, and what we see now in terms of like supply chain is just breaking down that barrier. And I think I gave you an example. Like our, our whole intention is to be like a DocuSign type approach for okay. someone who's like a small, a small manufacturer. You want to work with these big players and get these jobs mm-hmm. um, and do and do the work, but you don't want to have to spend, you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in training and software to be able to just play with them. Um, right. And our whole philosophy is that on the other end for the companies who are trying to just, you know, be part of this and learn and grow, we got to make that first step really easy. So yeah. low barrier and just make it accessible. So DocuSign, someone sends you a link to sign, you click the link, it says, click this button, it says, here's your signature, done, great, thumbs up. Yeah. Similar for us, right? We make it for uh, small, medium manufacturers who might be getting, you know, a set of drawings and get mm-hmm. feedback. Click a link in your email, pops open the drawings in your browser. You don't have to download anything. You can see 3D models in your browser. Yep. Give your feedback right there in place. Done. And it's right there in real time back to the other person. And you didn't have to do anything except for click the link in your email and put yep. your ideas down. And that's that's sort of the approach. And then long term, we've got a lot of other plans for, for really helping at the yep. small, medium uh, size business to actually just adopt you know these new technologies. It sounded like, and we touched on this before, there's an element of, you know, even up to through the university and perhaps, you know, slightly afterwards, engineers today, you know, they're, they're exposed to the latest tools, the latest thinking, this almost infinite way to be creative. And then they, they bring that enthusiasm and that ability to innovate and create out into a workplace that mm-hmm. is effectively the pin to your balloon. <laughs> yeah. Right, Be- because it's like it, it just sucks all the air out of the balloon, and it, it's it sounds like there's so much more time spent on the administration. It's like this much administration, this much creating, and yeah. th- that's got to be killing the job market. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's it's funny because you know, well, it's not funny, I guess, but it's it's real that that's true because yeah. you look you look at my co-founder for example, right? Yeah. Like Tesla for him was his his dream job when we started school and he got in there and he liked what he was doing, but there's just so much that's outside of that innovation realm because yeah. you have to, right? And it's, it's not an easy problem to fix, but you look at um, bigger organizations, yeah. more than half the time is spent just literally trying to find data, 
yeah. share things, give updates. And it's not even on, you know, it's not even on CAD, it's not even on engineering design, it's not even on manufacturing. It's on things that have been, you know, solved in a lot of other verticals and industries. And I'll give you an example. We, we work with a company called Genoa and um, they do an, an extremely high volume of drawing uh, development, okay. production design firm and shipbuilding industry. And they're doing thousands of drawings a month. Um, and we, when we started working with them, we looked at, you know, what is this actually going to be? What is this going to mean long term? Yeah. Um, and after going through something like 30,000 drawings in Colab, they've saved 51% of the time they used to work on production drawings because they aren't doing all those other steps of, you know, finding it and sharing it and printing yeah. it and uploading things and recording things and making trackers and stats. Like, you don't need to do that. You should yeah. have to be able to click link. Give your feedback. Use your brain, right? That's that's yeah. what those people are good at. Is you know, right. thinking about here's the feedback. Here's how we make this ship better. Or here's yeah. how we make that part better. And yeah. you know, that's that's what's exciting. And that's that's ultimately why we got into doing this. Is that you know, we want to see people sending you know that next technology to Mars yeah. or creating that clean tech solution or creating a, a medical solution that's going to save people's lives, right? And yeah. If we can do that two, three years faster because we're not sitting around trying to figure out what what's the right file and how do we actually manufacture this thing. You know, imagine where we are in 20, 30 years. We start yeah. cutting that kind of time out, and that's ultimately the driver uh, for pretty much everything that we do today. That's really exciting. Without getting in, you know, too far into the weeds on it, uh, you know, what are some of the obvious, um, I guess, things that uh, obvious points of friction that you take out of the way for and en for engineering teams? I mean, what's what are some of the Hey, now you don't have to do this. It, it happens in the background. Now this is automatic. You know, give yeah. us a sense of that. Yeah, simple way to start is, is very, very fundamental things. So you're trying to view a file, um, CAD file, 3D model, drawing, whatever it might be. Oftentimes the team who is like most natively editing that file, you know, they have it open on their desktop. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is inconvenienced by either seeing a screenshot or their sent a step file or they're sent something else for FTP mm -hmm. and they got to try to figure out what to do with that. Very first thing we do is take all of that out. You can click a link from like SolidWorks, push the file right into the browser, and mm -hmm. it shows up on a link, no different than if I sent you a link to a website. Um, wow. securely, securely hosted, obviously, but mm -hmm. on your end, you just click the link, it pulls open your browser, you can you know measure, section, explode, get the data you need from the model, but then give your feedback in real time. So wow. instead of having that email communication or a conversation in Microsoft Teams on a static picture, you now have the rich data that's married back to SolidWorks and the rest of your data set to actually have that conversation in context. And context is like one of the key things we talk about. Yeah. It's all about, you know, engineering has a lot of data, a lot of engineering right. data. It's about giving you the right data at the right time and making it easy for someone to consume it. And that's ultimately the first part. The second part is the entire review process. Mm -hmm. So if someone's trying to do a drawing package review, normally you're taking it and sending it and saying, I'm going to track it, no one's coming back. And, I'll take care of his feedback. We cut out all of that. We, we've created a process called Leader. Leader effectively walks you through the steps of doing design review, no matter if it's like a peer review yeah. or a formal gate review. It doesn't matter if it's 3D, it doesn't matter if it's DFM, drawing package, document, doesn't matter. We take that, make it simple, walk you through the process. Mm -hmm. And on the other end, give you a visual Kanban board that basically shows, you know, Ray's got 14 things open in review and mm -hmm. he's got 20 that are done and you don't have to do anything to get that. It's automatically wow. pulling that data for you. And showing you where you're to and you know then the very back end of all that is all that feedback and knowledge and communication we basically track for you so okay. if you want if you're used to you know your your oil your open issues list or whatever you make back your issues in today all the same thing you can tag all your metadata the difference is it's all in context now so it's against the 3d model it's against the drawing it shows up though in a table the exact same way you know and love yeah. um, we're actually about to make a pretty big announcement in the next I guess it's about two weeks from now okay. um, it's called collab track yeah. and collab track is effectively going to give you like a hub for all of your feedback and review okay. data where you can come in and create whatever view you like. So, you know, right. You might look at this from say a, man, a manager's perspective. Sure. You want to see, you know, what feedback is late that is high priority. That's holding us up from getting this thing out the door. Okay. Your dashboard will just show that wow. you might then be me as a designer, you pull it back and it's just, I want to see Adam's punch list. Mm -hmm. You might be someone else who's saying, I want to see across every project, what issues exist with this part. Right. And you can get all that, save your filters, pin your home, um, and then that's it. You're never making spreadsheets. You're not doing any oh. stuff. You're just focused on solving the problem then. And that's ultimately the goal, right? You said you talked about the administration. Yeah. You joke sometimes, like, 
the goal is the goal is to innovate and not administrate. And that's that's really, <laughs> really what we're truly what we're trying to do um, is help teams actually get back to that because that's yeah. that's why people become engineers and join the manufacturing world is to build and create stuff. And yeah, um, I'll leave you with one other anecdote. We 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 talked to a couple of Fortune 500. Um, players in the automotive world yeah. um, and they've shared with us that one of the main reasons they want to work with us mm-hmm. as of efficiencies and costs reductions sure. that kind of stuff, is actually attracting and retaining talent it's like mm-hmm. one of the core reasons that's because the next generation coming into the industry and even people who are getting used to microsoft teams mm-hmm. they're getting a taste right they're getting a taste of what is better mm-hmm. um, and it comes back to i don't want to work that yeah. old school way if someone sends me a, a document to sign and it's not a DocuSign now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, I don't want to. I don't even want to. I don't even want to try to look and do that, right? I just want to click the link, do it, right. and it's over. And it's it's real. I signed a document for uh, a five figure deal in Boston Pizza last yeah. week because it was sent to me in DocuSign. If that had been to my yeah. phone, you know, it would have yeah. been a week later for sure. So yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's the small things that really matter again in the starters. That's that's awesome. You bring up an excellent point about the whole. You know the the next generation. Uh, you know we're there's still some lingering pockets. Uh, you know where we're we're clinging uh, to the, uh, the the prehistoric notion of of how you need to train and learn. You mm-hmm. know in manufacturing. You know we we talked. Let me give you a file and a block of steel and come back in a year and uh, you know I'll show you something else. <laughs> it's like it doesn't work that way anymore. You know it doesn't have to. You know. No. The interesting thing we found is that, you know, we, we do have some pushback from, yeah. you know, people who are used to working a certain way, mm-hmm. but that's fair because they've been burned before. They've had tools that didn't work. They didn't meet their expectations. And, you know, we're not perfect either. We're, we're getting there and growing. The thing sure. is we like, to listen. we like to listen and get close to people and understand yeah. you know, what do you need? And um, I, I always like love this example. There was a senior designer, one of our customers and on day one, I think I told you a story yesterday when we were chatting day one, he said, you know, I'm not using this tool. Like it's not happening. Um, and like he actually invested in a printer so that he can keep printing out all the drawings at home and COVID yeah. started. Within five days, he called me back and, you know, he actually said at first he hated Colab. That was the first thing he said. Okay. Five right. days later, he was our favorite user, loves us. He still is like 18 months later. Like That's awesome. Top users, because all it took was to realize, you know, this is not meant to make your job harder. Yeah. This is meant to cut stuff you didn't like about your job and yeah. make you better at the part you're good at. Because right. like, for most most senior folks in engineering, like the opportunity now is to actually educate that junior class coming in. Good point. There's so much knowledge that gets lost. Like it's unbelievable. It's like I remember when I first worked in industry, one of the teams I worked with had an entire team of MIT and Stanford, like PhDs, absolutely mm-hmm. brilliant folks and if one of them left on a particular subsystem like where were you getting the information from it was a small team yeah and i was thinking to myself now like, it would have been great to have captured all that somewhere yeah like, I, could, I could get to learn more from them and you know that's what it's all about is building stuff and learn how to build it better and do it faster and build cooler things um, yeah. to help work. exactly you know it's, i had the opportunity today i spent some time at a uh, there's a trade show in the chicago area designed to part and it's a lot of small shops um, high mix, low volume, you know, you know, real, real heart of the industry, you know, type folks. And, you know, the, the refrain hasn't changed, you know, where they're at their best. These people are master craftsmen at what they do. And it's like, if we could just get to the point where we talk, you know, can, can have a good, meaningful conversation about engineering stuff, uh, that that's all they want to do, whether they're in, whether their shop is in Nebraska or Chicago or wherever, wherever it is in the world, uh, mm-hmm. you know, just that, that's the Holy grail for everybody. And then all this other stuff gets in the way, you know, I, I agree. And like, we always talk about like people talk about, you know, model based enterprise, digital twins, digital mm-hmm. thread, like all these different concepts, they're all important, right? Yeah. But they're, they're not possible without first creating this like element of like how we work better together in a digital way. Yeah. Because otherwise, they're massive burden to everybody trying to get in. They're really important to happen. But we always said the very first step yeah. is putting true engagement and collaboration where it's easy for everybody to be engaged. Yeah. Because if it's not easy for, you know, say a manufacturer mm-hmm. to be engaged, that's a break point in that whole flow. And then you got to do something different. Um, yeah. And you talk about then doing like, you know, model-based definition. What happens when companies start, stop issuing drawings. If you don't find a way to communicate that in a way with manufacturers on board, mm-hmm. you know, it's never going to truly work. And, 
you know, that's, that's the challenge and that's the opportunity. It's one of the things that, you know, I, I'm passionate about is how do we make that super easy for everybody to understand? Because right. I give you an example, I'm, I'm building a house right now and the, the gentleman who's, who's like leading that build is, is really, really experienced. I'm learning a ton of stuff from him just mm-hmm. like here the house. And it's like, now I happen to be close by and on site. So like I can actually hear some of this, but like, I thought I'd be capturing that during the manufacturing process when I'm building new parts and new products yeah. and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's only like little bits. Like you mentioned, like everyone has like their niche and like their skill yeah. they want to engineer and build. You know, you lose a bit of that. And it, yeah. Yeah, I think it's just such a shame because these yeah. people have such a broad wealth of experience. Right. Um, that's, that's like, it's just tribal knowledge. Um, yeah. and, I, and I think getting that and like leveraging that and just make it easier for everybody. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And I always point to companies like, you know, Zometry, right? Yeah. Zometry is an incredible example of taking what was a very hard problem, connecting, you know, these engineering companies to manufacturers in mm-hmm. a way of being able to build something. Yeah. Uh, and making it low enough barrier to entry that everybody wanted to do it. And I, and I think it's a beautiful example of, you know, harmonizing all parts of the manufacturing world. Yeah. Sure. I think we're going to see another 10 or 20 not competitors of Zometry, but tangential pieces that puzzle start to pop up that then start playing together. And then you get a whole new ecosystem. And that's, yeah. that's what I'm excited for. Yeah. And, and it, it, that whole interoperability, uh, I, I was on the lookout for that. Cause when, when we talked about that again, I was at the show and I, I came across a company that had a, um, they, they had software that helped track, uh, you know, tooling for CNC operations. It's, it goes right from the design to, Hey, here's, here's the cutters we're going to use. These are the holders that should happen goes to, communicates to the tool crib everything else so i i was i channeled you and i started asking i says well what if it's not sandvik cutters what if it's kind of metal or whatever no problem we make it real easy to pull in everybody's catalog and i'm like yeah it's happening <laughs> you know that's what it's all about right it's baby steps i always like the biggest thing i always say to anybody who's considering making a change or looking for something is yeah. you know find that first step like yeah. don't get too caught up in the end state know where you want to go yeah focus on the first step and they'll start to just kind of balloon. You won't even realize, right? Yeah. The second you start communicating over drawings digitally, yeah. doing that over a 3D model is just a different file. Good point. And then yeah. getting rid of the drawing and doing it with the measurements and like PMI information in the model yeah. is really not a stretch because then you start measuring the model. Like it, it's all about baby steps and not just jumping right to the, you know, five year end product. That's, yeah. uh, that's, the way it's often. That's, that's interesting because a lot of what I've seen in the last few years, and it's getting better. But a lot of the buzz around, you know, digital transformation type stuff, getting to that, you know, the digital twin, the, di- you know, the digital thread and all that, uh, it's, it starts with, uh, the, tr- the transformational aspect. We want to yeah. get to the transformation yeah. phase. You know, how, how much does it cost to get to transformation? <laughs> it's like, uh, how I'll, many, how many times do you want to buy it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a hot take. I think the biggest transma- digital transformation that's happened in the last decade is Microsoft Teams and Slack. I actually think Interesting. Like, un- fundamentally yeah. the impact that that will have will spawn so many other things because it happens so fast okay. and so wide across almost every single industry. Yeah. The people now are used to working that way. And that's all it takes is like, if you then plugged in Colab, like we're building yeah. all these tools, if Collab starts plugging in the Microsoft Teams in Slack and you just happen to click a link in Slack yeah. or Microsoft Teams and then all of a sudden your 3D data is there or that yeah. issue you're looking for is there, like you don't realize it's changing. It's yeah. the same way like when I found Slack seven years ago, I was like, oh my God, I don't have to talk in a Facebook message group or I don't have to like be on email. <laughs> right. And then that changed my whole life. Like we built Collab strictly around, you know, asynchronous communication in Slack. Yeah. yeah. Everything else is, you know, yeah. Table stakes now it just plugs in, easy, simple. Yeah. It changed everything for us, and I think the same thing's happening. You watch, like a couple of years from now, having yeah. that there opened up people's appetite for cloud tools, yeah. which is huge. Yeah, and it made people less scared of you know tools because they were good. They were good experiences. Like that's, true, that's what it is. Yeah, a sim- a sim- something simple that just worked. It just yeah. works. Yeah, it just works. Like that's yeah. I actually saw a pitch deck today from a, another company back way back when. Yeah. I think it was Dropbox actually. Mm-hmm. And the last line on the slide of why Dropbox yeah. was it just works. And <laughs> and it's true, it did, right? And that's yeah. some people value. It's like, did it is it easy? Did it work? Yeah. Great. Yeah. It it's most times it doesn't, right? So that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Hey, I gotta ask you, you know, in the in the history of innovation, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that were developed and deployed with a specific purpose in mind. 
uh, only to find out that they end up getting used in in very different ways. Are, are you finding any of that uh, as you, as you deploy uh, your tools to different companies? Yeah, we we've seen a whole bunch of stuff. And to be honest, when we first started, like the problem statement was so big. It was like, how do engineering teams work together and yeah. solve like five thousand problems? And we've narrowed that down quite a lot. But you know, I, I gave I gave an example of like just one case, like one one big company um, that we work with, industrial equipment leader. Mm -hmm. um, they came to us a couple of years ago and started using Colab sort of on a global level doing change review. Okay. Um, trying to make their change review process faster across different geographies and locations and, yeah. you know, tying their plant into their actual engineering team. And, you know, that was their base use case. And that was sort of like our core. Um, and then you get into COVID um, and they used to do DAV events and they'd fly people to the plant and say, how do we actually improve this product for next year? How do we mm -hmm. reduce the cost for next year? And ultimately when COVID happened, that had to stop. Uh, but when you go and look at like what that event usually would be for any yeah. company, yeah. flying, you know, five or 10 people taking almost a week, yeah. um, being on site and then having to document and record all the stuff after, sure. like, I don't know the actual cost, but you had to be talking tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to do these sure. uh, every time you're doing them, because that's not a cheap thing to do. Right. And not to mention, it's only a part of your team. Yeah. So we, we actually came up with this idea and said, you know, why don't we virtually host VAV events? And they were already used to putting the same 3D model in there to do change review. Mm -hmm. So like, literally all we built was um, using our Colab presentation tool, a walkthrough of about 30 different CAD models. Okay. Um, and a package of bill of materials and drawings and 50 people from all over the world got into little teams, teams of four and five. Mm -hmm. And they actually went through and just pinning ideas all over the 3D geometry. Right. And it was like the most unique and beautiful thing we've seen. Wow. Was like, it was a three minute training video, a three minute training video, 50 okay. people all over the place. And the best part was at the end of the exercise, yeah. um, people wrote back that they had fun. And, and, and that was like, and I was like, that was the best part. We heard really good things about cost savings and the rest. Sure. They said they had fun. And I said, that's cool. Uh, someone said, you know, we had fun doing this thing. Yeah. Um, that company has been doing these events virtually in collab now every month uh, since this was probably 12 or 14, wow. 12 or 14 months ago now. And, you know, something that I think we're going to dive into, but you never really know, right? Until you get in, like drawing review, for example. Yeah. We originally started to focus on 3D models. Uh, okay. And we realized that a lot of people are still passing a lot of paper around yeah. and like physically passing paper around. We were like, you know, we can cut out the paper yeah. and we can make it way more accessible. Yeah. So uh, it's all about listening and learning yeah. from customers because that's how we've built our product. And that's what's fun about it for me is like hearing and seeing. Like I was at a, uh, I was at a fire last night with a few friends who were home and, yeah. uh, one of their uh, siblings had their girlfriend over and she uses Colab. Oh. She actually had feedback for me at this fire on things to make the product better. And we turned around today and we we're like, how do we make this better? And like, that's like, that's the type of iteration that, you know, you want to oh have. Oh my God. That's awesome. Yeah. It was like the most random section <laughs> ever. Um, yes. That's what it's all about. That's cool. I have, I have to ask you one, one last question. I know you have one very special VIP user of collab that is helping you with build your house. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, my mom is a collab <laughs> user. And I told you this <laughs> yesterday. So she, she, for context is an amazing lady. Um, yeah. she is not, not very tech enabled or she wasn't, I should say, cause she okay. actually is now yeah. so I say six months ago, she got on Facebook. Uh, but at the same time, yeah. I gave her access to collab because yeah. I was during COVID and stuff like, I was trying to be careful of not, you know, I didn't want to get sure. her sick. So I, of course. I, you know, I was trying to share drawings with her and I said, man, it's a shame that I don't have her in call. I was like, well, why don't I try? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I gave her access. I called her for, you know, five or 10 minutes. And anyway, I told her how to open it up and log in and all this kind of stuff. And then the next day I was at work on a demo with a customer. Yeah. And anyways, I got the app open and I see notifications coming in, in the app. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I looked and I was like, it's my mom. <laughs> uh, she, was, she was reviewing the drawings that I had posted earlier that morning mm -hmm. from the builder. Yeah. Anyways, every, every time I, I put new drawings up, it sends her a notification. Mm -hmm. And she's in there immediately. <laughs> Did you consider the heat pump? Did you look at this? Like, is that actually <laughs> there? You know, she's loving it. And uh, that, that kind of underscores, you know, like the experience, right? Because my yeah. mom, that she doesn't know any difference now. She was just looking at a drawing and talking yeah. to and that's that's what the value is. Can you can you get to that? And yeah, that's, I want I want a whole lot more of those moments. <laughs> that <laughs> so, is awesome. That is awesome. I always cherish. Good good for you for 
for sharing that. And uh, man, props to your mom for jumping in and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and dropping awesome. dropping notes on you. <laughs> oh yeah, she's got she's got all sorts of feedback. But uh, oh. yeah, no, it, it's pretty awesome, right? I think you know, even just looking at that, she's been a huge supporter for years. Sure. Um, just seeing her reaction to it was yeah. like that was the best part. I think. Right. Well, it goes back to it works. You know. Yeah. That, that is yeah. that is incredible. Well, Adam, we could we could go on and on and on. Uh, but I am sure glad uh, that you took some time to to share your cool journey and the awesome stuff you're doing with uh, with Colab and the journey you're on now. Uh, everybody out there, please uh, track down Adam, track down his company, follow him, see what's going on, uh, dig into it because this is just the beginning. Uh, I'm confident he's building something that is. Uh, that we're going to be talking about years from now, and uh, it's it's going to change a lot of companies and a lot of lives because it just works and does what it's supposed to do. So, Adam, thank you again for for joining us. Uh, for the trailblazers out there that are following us, if you enjoyed today's conversation uh, with Adam, please follow and subscribe. We're on Apple Podcast. We're all over the place. You can find us. If you really enjoyed it, leave a note. We would sure love to hear from you. And uh, to all of you out there, please keep manufacturing out loud because we need you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to MFG Out Loud with Ray Zaganto and Allison DeFore. You can subscribe and find show notes at mfgoutloud.com. 